What's up? I'm Hammer26 here. My Ring of Honor 7th Anniversary Show Review. Overall, this was a great show, uh, so let's get to the review. First match was Roderick Strong and Eric Stevens versus Rhett Titus and Kenny King. Now, this is a pretty good opener. Uh, Strong looked very impressive in this match, and this is the point where I thought that Titus and King are really gelling as a tag team. Uh, I give that two and three quarter stars. So, there's that. Next, Brent Albright and Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, this match was pretty solid. Uh, I give it three and one quarter stars. Uh, a lot of good back and forth action. You can tell that Ring of Honor wanted this feud to continue past this show. Uh, Albright did a move where he reversed, I think he did like a crucifix, uh, did like a, a standing crucifix, or like a crucifix head scissors into like a, into his finisher, the crowbar, which was, I thought was really cool. And this match, uh, definitely solid. Alright, next was, um, gonna be able to the Sweet and Sour Incorporated Challenge, where Bobby Dempsey takes on someone of Larry Sweeney's choosing, who later had a falling out with the company, but he chose Scrap Iron Adam Pierce, and who, of course, is the booker for Ring of Honor, and, uh, this ma th match went about 20 seconds, but anyone who questions that Adam Pierce's priorities for the company were not in the right order, pretty much shut up after this match, because it served the right purpose, and it was solid for that purpose. Next, we got Jerry Lynn versus Mike Quackenbush. I actually really like this match. Um, Quack definitely needs to do more Ring of Honor because he is a great wrestler. And This is Jerry Lynn. Uh, it was kind of predictable he was going to get the victory here, and he did. But there's a lot of great submission back and forth stuff. And you could tell that Jerry Lynn wasn't, uh, was getting some booze from the crowd, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but it was a good, solid match. And one thing that you see with this card, from top to bottom, it was a solid card. And I always liked that from Ring of Honor. Next, we got the Revolution Rules match, which was Tyler Black, Delirious, and the Necro Butcher, who are all former members of the Age of the Fall versus the Age of the Fall of Jimmy Jacobs and Brody Lee and their partner Austin Aries. This match was great, but it was very gimmicky. And I don't know how to explain like how gimmicky it was. Like It was more gimmicky, in my opinion, than the pure title used to be. It was... A little weird, and it took away from the match. Or also, I would have given it four stars. But I got to knock it down a half a star because of it, so I give it three and a half because it was a, a lot of good in-ring action in this match. Next, we got a match that was going to be billed as Bison Smith and a mystery partner versus Brian Danielson and a mystery partner. Uh, the night before this, Bison Smith was a member of the uh, the newly formed Embassy, which was announced to be reforming by Prince Nana the night before this show. And Prince Nana brought back the crown jewel of the embassy from before, Jimmy Rave, who was recently fired from TNA before this, to be Bison's partner. And uh, Brian's partner was recently fired from WWE by this point, Colt Cabana. And there was a lot of good stuff in this match, too. This is probably the match of the night to that point in the card. Um, Colt got a huge pop when he came out, and I, there's not many moments in Ring of Honor like that, so... It was very, very cool. Next, we got probably the worst match in the night that was was set out to at least be good, which was D'Lo Brown versus Jay Briscoe. In this match, you saw D'Lo Brown's heel turn, uh, and Jay Briscoe uh, really couldn't get any offense started in this match because of the heel turn. Uh, so that probably much took over in the match, and there wasn't all that much good in-ring action besides that. So there's that. The next was... Uh, Okay, I like cards that have a strong ending, and this show definitely had that, with two great matches at the end. The first of the two was the ROH World Tag Team Paddle Match, with the American Wolves taking on the then-champions Kevin Steen and El Generico. This is a no-DQ match, and there's a lot of great stuff in here. There's one spot where uh, El Generico was on one side of the ring, and he had Davey Richards on a ladder on the other side. And he sprung off, and Davey moved, so he went kind of like right into the ladder, which looked really brutal. And there was a, a ton of uh, hate in here, and this is, you can tell that this is where Steen was injured, and he could barely walk to the ring, so. And he still delivered a great match. And the post-match, uh, there's a lot of activity that happened, you'll have to see it, because I definitely recommend this DVD. 
in the main event was Nigel McGuinness versus Kenta. Uh, Kenta definitely was targeting Nigel's arm, and you got the feeling that he would do anything to win the Ring of Honor world title. So he did, and Nigel, even though both of his arms were kind of hurt, he still delivered a great match, and this was match of the night by a pretty far margin. Uh, it's a great match. Uh, I'll give it four and a quarter stars. I'll give the World Tag Team Title match four stars, and I definitely uh, want to see wanted to see more from Kenta in in Ring of Honor in 2009. We do get that, especially with Supercard of Honor 4, which I'll do, be doing a review of hopefully before Sunday, and uh, we'll get to see what he does in Detroit and Chicago. All right, this is my Ring of Honor 7th Anniversary Show review. I'll see you later.